doing. Yay. Okay. So what I like to do, this is what we're going to do, is just add some cute little stems. The color I'm using is just a pearl silvery color. Oh, it says chrome. I was looking for the color. It says chrome. These are six by six, Wendy. Um, it says chrome, so it's kind of a silvery pearl color, but you could use any color you want. You can use green. Sometimes I use gold. Sometimes I use white. Uh, just depends on my mood. Today, I'm in a pearl mood. Or chrome. I'm feeling chromey today. So the first thing I do is paint my 6x6 white. And I like to use the thicker canvases because I call these shelf sitters. So that when you, you, know, you buy them, you can just give them as a gift. They sit on a shelf. You don't have to hang them. Uh, yes, guzzle, guzzle. Cheers. <laughs> Miss Carolyn knows me very well. So uh, you don't have to hang them. So if you're gonna do these little small ones, try and get the thicker canvas so that they can be nice little shelf sitters for your customer. So what I like to do is take my little pen and I wanna hit it on my hand, no matter what pen you're using, because you want any air that's in your pen to come to the top so that when you're squeezing, it doesn't go and spew paint everywhere. So we're gonna pop all that air to the top. So all our paint's at the bottom, all our air's up here. So now I'm gonna do a little test real quick on my little napkin and make sure that our paint is coming out nicely. So test first on something else. That way, if it squirts, it squirts on your test and not on your canvas. So now what I'm gonna do, hey Jean, how are you boo? What I'm gonna do is just make stems and I'm not gonna even analyze this whatsoever. I just want them to go in random direction. So usually I like to start in the center and I'm just going to squirt and pull away, squirt. We'll come this way, we'll come up, we'll come across, up, completely off the canvas, and basically you're just creating stems. I don't even worry about whether my flower is going to hit that stem or not, because trust me, no one will know the difference one way or the other once it's all said and done. Okay, so that is just that easy. Shelf sitter. <laughs> Watch it, Diana. <laughs> I know, right? I'm surprised I haven't said that before, too. So you are going to, this is, Nina, this is called Allure, but this is super hard to find. And you can find it on Amazon, but it's going to be way overpriced. These used to be $3.50 at the Hobby Lobby, but they have um, discontinued them. You can use any dimensional paint pen, okay? Any dimensional paint pen at your local craft store. It does not have to be that brand. All right, so that one, we're gonna stick in the oven. Not really, that's a metaphor. And we are going to do these two pieces that are already dry. I did these earlier so that we would have something dry to work with. So I already did my little stems. Took about three hours for these things to dry. So now they are ready for pretties. I'm gonna scooch them down just a hair. And we are gonna start by, let me see if I can move my fan, even though that makes me crazy. This way? Uh, oh, this way or this way? Okay. Is that right? I think it's the opposite of what you think. Okay, we're trying to get everything centered, sorry. So I have a whole plate full of beautiful little nuggets, and I also brought up another little bag in case I get too nitpicky about things, so I would have lots to choose from. I also have some little green nippies that I nipped right before we went live. They are, this is just sheet glass and I use my wheeled nippers to create some leaves. So, let me see. Also, we are going to be using some bubbles. Uh, one, we're gonna use green glass, and the other, we're gonna be using clear. 
We'll talk about that as we get to it. And so let's go ahead and just apply in this yummy. We're gonna go ahead and just put our flowers on our canvas, okay? So, oh, I love this one. Look at this one, it's super delicious. It is purple. And we're going to just stick him wherever we think he belongs. We may move him around, I don't know. We're just gonna play it by ear. So I like to mix up my colors a little. And I don't like anything to be lined up this way perfectly or this way. So I like to kind of move things around. I'm a weirdo, what can I say? So we'll do this, a little variety of color. Here's a blue one. So I'm just gonna start putting, is there a pink one? Oh. Oh, let's put that, mm, let's put that here, it's bigger. And we'll put this one here. And I'm gonna, I know none of my stems stop down here, but I'm still going to add a few little things down here. That's just how I roll. Here's a little teeny, oh, look how pretty this one is. So it's got a little bit of red to it. And let's find something else that's kind of small. We'll stick right there. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is just take some random smaller pieces. So I'm just kind of going through my glass and I'm just gonna stick a few here and there. Because I like to have a bunch of flowers. Try not to line things up, sometimes it's hard. Let's see what I got. I don't have a lot of clear. Normally I like to put some clear on here. That one's pretty cool. We'll add that. So just adding some flowers, just a little bit of something here and there. So now before I do anything else, I am going to take some glass. For this one, I'm gonna use green. This is just regular green classic. You can find this on my website as well. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of this green. Whoa, almost alcohol abuse. Almost knocked over the wine. Gotta watch that. That's against the wall, I'm pretty sure. So I'm gonna add just a little bit of that green glass down at the bottom. And I like it to be kind of organic. I don't want it to be a straight, perfect line. And now I'm gonna add a few leaves, not very many. I like to kind of pick out some smaller leaves and add those to some of the bigger flowers. So we'll put one there. Let me, let me break this one in half. So we'll take this one and make it a little bit smaller. And we'll add another leaf to that flower. And then we'll do one little leaf over here. And I'm satisfied with that, but you can add as many or as much, the chunks, yes, Bianca, these are on my website as, do a search for glass chips and you'll find those. Um, now, I wanna add the bubbles. So I'm just gonna take a handful of bubbles and I am just going to lay them out. It's kind of a filler and it kind of completes the look it gives it that extra little something, something that you love. We'll add a few down here at the bottom. And this one, voila, is done. Just, okay, Maureen, I do still have some. So I will, um, I will fix that as soon as we're done. So this is our cute little green piece. Pretty. So we'll set that one aside and we'll do this one. I'll fix it. I shall. So let's do this one. We will do, here's some cool purple. That might, I don't know if that'll work or not. Let me see, it's kind of broken. Let's bring it down here. Oh, look at this purple piece. We'll add another purple. Um, I just am random adding whatever, um, pieces stand out to me. Check out that sexy piece right there. 
And, oh, this one is lovely, but it's not going to lay right because of the way it shapes. So I'm gonna break it off a little. Oops, I didn't break it off near as much as I needed to. Hang on. Hang on. Sometimes you have to shape them up a little. So what I'll do is come down here and I'm gonna add both those pieces that I just nipped and just make it like two little flower butts. Let's see what else we have. I love this teal piece. We'll bring it down here. I need something kind of big for there. Oh, look at that. I need something here. Let me see what I got. I'll add those back to, yes, they are like baby's breath. I'll add the glass chips back. I do have a lot. That one, this one's fantastical and perfect. It's very dimensional. Um, I'll add those back because I did just get a huge shipment, so it's all good. We'll fix that. So here's that piece. Now I'm gonna kind of find a few little smaller pieces and add a few here and there just for extra oomph. Well, oh, that's almost like a leaf. Let's add that right there. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and add some of this clear glass to the bottom so that we can decide what needs to happen next. So this is just clear classic. It's actually a bit thinner glass. This is some new glass that I uh, uh, received. The clear classic is normally about a quarter inch thick and this is an eighth inch. And I love it for smaller things. And I probably will be listing that on my website for so that if you need smaller glass for smaller pieces, we are going to have that listed on the website because I have access to a boatload of it. I like it for baby pieces when you need something a little small. So we're going to add some of that clear glass. Let's add a couple more little baby leaves. We'll add one here, maybe here. Nope, that's too big. Oh, right here. We'll add a little baby leaf there. Maybe here. And bubbles. <laughs> so let's add our bubbles and then we'll see if there's something else we need. Bubbles fix everything. If you followed me for any length of time, you know that bubbles have to go on everything. Bubbles are the icing to every glass art cake. Go a few at the bottom. And just that quick, we have two fantastical. I love this piece. I don't know that you guys can see just how awesome this piece in the corner is, but I wanna show it to you. See how dimensional it is? It's really thick in 3D and it stands up off the canvas so beautifully. So here is that piece. Oh, is that not awesome? Uh, Debbie, I'm not sure what you mean. The glass chips are, um, yeah, they're all different colors and I'm just using, when I fill an order for the glass chips, what I normally do is I bag them up and we just take a handful and put them in a bag. We do not like pick out. Now, if I pick up a handful and they're all one solid color, like they're all cobalt, then I will um, take some of that out and add something else in, but I do not like pick through and, um, you know, look at every little piece. I just grab some and um, that's what you get. But these are an excellent uh, view of what we have. I mean, this is very conducive to what I have available right now. So that is where, uh, that's what you're going to get. So yes, Claire, you should ask them that for certain, okay? So now we are ready to rumble or resin, whichever way you wanna put it. 
So let's get ready. Is anybody ready to resin? Yes, not too many um, leaves, not too few, not too many. I just like to add a few in here and there. Don't want to overwhelm the green because it really does stand out pretty good. All right, so I have uh, two blocks that I'm going to put our pieces on when I get to that point, but never resin your pieces without lifting them up. I see some debris. Without lifting them up onto a riser so that it doesn't leak down the sides and mess up your table. Okay, so now, <laughs> oh my God. So now I am going to mix up some resin. This is a six by six. Let me get my gloves on and I'm going to mix, um, let's see. I'm gonna mix three a little over three ounces of resin. I'm actually going to use the milliliter measurement on my cup because I think these are gonna take about an ounce and a half a piece, a little over an ounce. And on the ounce side, it only does one, two, three, four, blah, blah. And so there's no half mark. So if I was gonna do three ounces, there's no one and a half. And we really wanna be really exact. So instead of doing one and a half and one and a half, I'm gonna do 50 milliliters and then 50 more milliliters, which is gonna be a little over three ounces. So just remember whatever measuring device you're using, that it has to be a 50-50 mixture. You do not, you can't measure this art resin by weight. It has to be uh, measured, okay? So I am using, huh? Uh, I'm using Art Resin. This is always what I use. So this is a 50-50 measurement. <laughs> this is, I'm dead, y'all. I'm dead. This is a 50-50 measurement. You're going to use 50% resin and 50% hardener. I got little glass pieces everywhere. I'm going to try to add them all back in to my little pieces. I don't want to leave anybody out. And... Okay, super distracted, guys. I'm going to, like, take a breath, and I'm going to have a sip of wine. And uh, I think it's the sweat running down my back that's making me crazy. <laughs> Welcome to menopause, ladies. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and mix resin. Hey, Sandy. So I'm going to mix 50 milliliters as slowly as I can. I don't want to go over. Now I will tell you this guys, I'm mixing in one cup, but if you're new, if you're new to mixing resin and making glass art, I encourage you always, always, always mix or measure in two cups. So you'll put part A in one cup, part B in a separate cup, and then mix them together. That way if you accidentally go over with one or the other, then you can adjust that before you mix them together. If you're mixing in one cup and you add too much hardener or too much resin, then it's really difficult as a newbie to kind of figure out that adjustment. So always mix in two cups, okay? I'm a professional. <laughs> and you gotta make something, boo. Okay, so I have somebody here in the studio with me who's going to um, time me. So Rima, somebody has taken your job for the day. My friend Dawn is in the house. Everybody say hello to Dawn. I've known Dawn since I was 12 years old. We went to high school together. We went to junior high together. We played softball together and we're still best buds, and she is here hanging out with me today. Hello, Donna, first time watcher, how are you today? Glad you're here, welcome, welcome. So we are going to mix this 
for three minutes, soft and slow. We're not gonna whip it to death. Look at everybody saying hello. We're not gonna whip it to death because the faster you mix, the more bubbles you're going to incorporate into your um, resin and you wanna eliminate that as much as possible. So we're gonna mix slow, scrape your bottom, <laughs> the, scrape the bottom of your cup. <laughs> scrape the sides. Don't scrape your bottom. <laughs> I know, Rima, are you out there? Rima's like, don't you take my job, Dawn. <laughs> Rima yells at me, y'all. Rima, are you there, boo? <laughs> She's like, I'm not talking to you now. I love you, Rima. Rima? knows I adore her. I've known Rima for probably 20 years or more. <laughs> Maureen says, smack me at three minutes because I don't listen. <laughs> it's, still it's still going. Rima knows I adore her whole face and there is not a single thing I would not do for that woman. I'm just giving Dawn something to do because she's staring at me bored out of her mind. <laughs> Rima's my girl. I couldn't even live my life without Rima. So we got about 50 seconds left. So if anybody has a quick question, uh, let me know now. I can answer anything you got to the best of my ability. You're the younger one. <laughs> you actually are, aren't you, Rima? I'm the old biddy. You're the young hot one. <laughs> I love Rima. No Rima a very long time. So we got 20 seconds. Uh, any, no questions? Aren't these gorgeous? 15. Hang on, don't take a chat. I'm not you, Rima, you actually know better than that. I'm not too nice. <laughs> okay, three, two, one. Three minutes are up, so you're gonna always wanna make sure you mix it for three minutes. If you uh, try to cut corners for with your mixing or your measuring, you're gonna have a hot, sticky mess, um, and you're gonna be so sad. I would price, the, is that water? It's okay, I'm gonna use these. I would price these, oh, I have some debris. Hang on, I'm gonna blow it off. I'm gonna use these ones. I have some debris somewhere here. Some dust, probably from my fan blowing. Blow all that dust off. I feel old and yucky too, honey. So I'm gonna raise these up on my little blocks so that if I overdo resin, and it could happen, especially lately, then because I'm lazy, Colette, and I only tape the backs of big pieces because I'm lazy, and I just don't. I'm super cautious, and that is like the most honest answer I can give you. <laughs> that is Judy. You're not old, honey. You're only as old as you feel. I saw Judy is my aunt. And I saw her last week, and she looked as beautiful as she did the t time previously that I saw her, which was probably 10 years ago. We didn't see where I came. <gasps> yes, we did. Okay, so we are, yeah, well, let's talk about that before I announce it. So I'm going to go ahead and start resining these two pieces. Uh, this has got a lot of glass all over the place, so we're just going to start at the bottom and work our way up towards the top, make sure we get every little bit of that glass covered. So we're gonna just start down here where we put that clear glass. Make sure you get all that stuff covered really nicely. Y'all, I'm gonna be begging y'all for ideas about what else to create for the store. Because y'all know me, I'm a beachaholic and I'm loving doing beachy things, but I need some landlock ideas. <laughs> I'm living in the Memphis area now 
And I feel certain if I'm gonna be selling some art to these people, I'm gonna to need to come up with something that's not beach related. Oh, that's right, Judy, I forgot about that. Yes, you did come. My dad's funeral was about 18 months ago. So I did see you there, but you've always been beautiful and it hadn't changed. So we're gonna just resin. So I actually, I am gonna be asking y'all for some um, hints and tips about what to create next, and then we'll just create them all together. We'll just do lot, lots of lives and we'll make our art together so everybody's happy. Chandelier, that is on my list, Joanne. It's been on my list for so long and every time I look at my list, I think I really wanna do that chandelier and I don't know what stops me. Guys, we're doing so much fun stuff in the Shattered Circle, y'all don't even know. Y'all don't even know. All right, we're almost done here. So I have all that covered. I'm gonna sneak a little bit underneath that piece because it's kind of dimensional and I wanna make sure it has resin underneath. And we may manipulate that when we come back to it, but let's do this one as well. Right, Deb? Me too. I need to be doing, oh, Patty, I'd love to see. Uh, I need to be doing things that are not beach related, but you know, my heart is sitting on the ocean. So, but I am, my focus for the next couple of weeks is to do anything not beach related. So we're gonna be doing maybe some fruit, some flowers, some butterflies, and uh, Dawn just said she wants to do a raccoon. Uh, maybe we'll do, you know, we're going to be doing some fun stuff that is non-beach related. So if I um, post on the Facebook and ask you for ideas, please give me your ideas because we may just do that live on Facebook for all you guys. So these, Lynette, these are going to be, haven't quite decided yet, but you, normally my 6x6 six six range anywhere from 29 to 35. So it depends on, you know, probably, you know, where you live and, uh, you know, where you're selling. These days with the market and, you know, the way things are in the world, I might um, be tempted to go with that lower price. Not to price yourself out of the market um, and make yourself cheap, but, you know, I, for me, honest to goodness, when I started first started doing art and started pricing my work, I priced not based on what other artists would tell me I should price, but here's how I kind of got to my pricing. Um, I love art. I have always loved art and I love and always have loved original art. So right now, I'm gonna just make sure that there's resin underneath some of these pieces so that, I, so that I make sure they stick down really well. So anyway, I love original art. I've always loved original art, but for the most part, for most of my life, I've never been able to afford <laughs> original art, never. So when I first started, my goal was to be wary, weary, wary, wary of that. I wanted to price my art where average Joe, average Jane, you know, people like me, I'm not, I'm middle class. I have been lower middle class <laughs> for most of my life. And I want people who are in my, you know, whatever you want to call it. I want people like me to be able to afford a piece of art. So that's kind of how I came up with my pricing structure. I wanted to be nice to the art community, but I also wanted people to be able to afford my art. There's some artists out there, even glass artists, whose artwork is so out of range for the average 
person that, you know, you just about have to be rich to afford it. And I don't ever want that to be the case for my art, ever. So I try to be consumer-minded without, you know, ruining it for everybody in, that's an artist. So I do want to make money. This is how I make my living, guys. I'm uh, unmarried. This is how I make my living. But I also, I don't need to be rich. I just need to pay my bills. So I try to keep that in mind. Does that make any sense? Am I just rambling like a crazy person? <laughs> okay, so I'll shut up now. So anyway. Oh, oh, yeah. So Dawn and I went to visit her dad last week after we dropped off a order for my Aunt Judy, who's here on the page. And on our way home, we came across these baby raccoons who were trying to cross the road. They were four teeny, teeny, tiny little baby raccoons, and we literally stopped in the street and videoed them. They were so <laughs> cute. So now Dawn is in raccoon land, and she wants us to make some babies. She's obsessed and now wants to make some raccoons. Okay, so I think we have all this covered, and I apologize for rambling. If you're new here, that's just how it goes sometimes. I'm a rambling fool sometimes, but you know what? I got a good heart. <laughs> that's what matters most. I just love my people. Okay, let me see what's going on. The top right blue on the right one seems off. This one? Oh, it might have shifted a little. Let me pull it up. I'll look at these when I'm done, and you know what I'll have to do is stand up, and right now I'm sitting on my little stool. I'll stand up and look at them and make any adjustments. Uh, can you see both of these now? Let's see. Couldn't handle possum, that's awesome. Okay, so let me stand up. Oh, I think that's good. Let me turn that one a little. I think we're good here. Let me scoot that up. Yeah, sometimes you have to like, you know, get your nose off the canvas a little bit and look at it from a little further away to see if there's any adjustments that may need to be made. That needs to scoot over a little, but I think this looks good. So I'm gonna take off my gloves. Judy said they caught five in her backyard in the last two weeks. Oh, oh that's right awesome. The I know, they were right there at your house, Judy. So we use, for both of those, we only, how much do we mix, three ounces? We used, I still have an ounce and a half, and we used, I used, I only used half of what I, what I mixed. I mixed 50 milliliters, or 100 milliliters, and I still have 50 left, so this took less than an ounce each. So I would say three quarters of an ounce for each six by six um, flower canvas. Let's go ahead and pop those bubbles. Make sure we don't have any bubbles in. Our art, now I say this every time, but I do it for a reason. When you're torching, you do this to pop any bubbles that are on your canvas from mixing that resin, okay? But you wanna keep that flame moving and you don't want that flame to ever touch your art. It's the heat from the torch that pops the bubbles, not the flame itself. You can use a propane torch, you can use a kitchen torch, like a creme brulee torch, or you can use um, a heat gun, okay? So these are done. Are these not the cutest things?